Technically, this game may be called Import Tuner Challenge, but those of us in the know call it something else, or at least you should. It's Tokyo Extreme Racer on the Xbox 360. Just ignore the title, it's Tokyo Extreme Racer. This series has been around for years and became quite popular in the West, at least on the Sega Dreamcast, where you'll find the amazing Tokyo Extreme Racer 1 and 2. You can find Tokyo Extreme Racer games on the PlayStation 2, like Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 and the Drifting Ones, but for whatever reason, Ubisoft published this game as Import Tuner Challenge on the Xbox 360 in 2006. What a literal name. That's also incorrect. Since you're driving in Japan, and all of these cars are Japanese, shouldn't it be called Domestic Tuner Challenge? Better yet, shouldn't it just have been called Tokyo Extreme Racer something? That's a great name for a series. Why, why'd they change it? Anyway. Prepare to spend hours exploring the mostly empty Tokyo highway system at night in the most mediocre driving game ever that somehow manages to be awesome. It's not a good driving game. They've never been good driving games. They're just good games. Import Tuner Challenge is like an RPG arcade-style driving game, where the emphasis is on grinding and leveling up rather than the actual racing. I personally find the Tokyo Extreme Racer series quite relaxing. You just cruise around at night and challenge other street racers. You win, you earn money, you upgrade your cars, and then put stickers all over them. It's fun. And I think this is the kind of game that you either get or you don't get. There's probably no in-between here. It's monotonous, but the monotony makes it a great late-night game. Tokyo Extreme Racer, I'm sorry, Import Tuner Challenge, is a good way to unwind after a long day. It takes quite some time to get into, like the other games in the series. You start out with a lousy ride and work your way up to the bigger, better cars. You defeat these teams of street racers and then eventually challenge their boss, and sometimes you'll even win their car. My recommendation is to use some of the boss cars for a while until you can modify something like a Skyline or an RX-7 to make it competitive. It's really all about speed in this game. You can do the suspension and the brakes and tires last, because the walls of the road keep you on the road and you take no damage. So just turn your car into a missile. Most of the time you win races by staying ahead of your opponent until their power bar goes all the way down. Others actually have a checkpoint. And you win by getting there first. If you keep driving on the highway system and winning over and over again, you increase the score multiplier. That's pretty handy. In order to unlock new segments of highway and new upgrades, you have to continue to win and defeat bosses, and as you drive around, you can look on the map. The blue triangles are cars that you have not yet defeated. So hunt them down and take them out. Make them fear you and your goofy name. Always pay attention to the names of your opponents here. They're, they're wonderful. That's part of what makes this series so good. Here's some of the best news of all. Import Tuner Challenge is really cheap and easy to collect for your Xbox 360, and I highly recommend it. If you've played any of the other Tokyo Extreme games, if you've enjoyed them at all, this is probably the best one. Because the puppy with the backpack makes it faster. And I've got a classic game room shout out and thank you to send all the way out to my man Frank from San Leandro, California. Thank you for sending Tokyo Extreme Racer Import Tuner Challenge on the Xbox 360. 
The driving controls really aren't anything special. The music's terrible, but since it's on Xbox 360, you can play your own music. And sure, there's way better driving games, but... This one has a puppy with a backpack. The best of classic game room is on DVD, Blu-ray, and Laser Hyper Vision album set. Puppy with a backpack.